I think, you know, you've seen, you know, you just alluded to the fact that banks are up 80% in a year. Um, the money, in fact, actually isn't leaving the market. It's just rotating. And as you said, you know, you saw obviously the wider market hit yesterday, but then that money rotated back to the growth, uh, you know, equation. So I'm not too concerned. And I think at bed, what we believe, which is the most important thing, is that, you're still getting um, you're still getting three three percentage uh, in, you're still getting a three percent uh, positive swing in equities. You know the earnings yield of the S and P on our earnings uh, for the next two years. You get a five percent earnings yield. That means that's the reverse of the PE. So you know what exactly is the S and P earning for you? And you're getting one and a half percent in bonds. So equities still are the only place to be in an environment with slightly higher inflation. So despite the concerns about your rotation, which, as I say, it's just the volatility at the moment goes from one sector to another with these short term traders. We still believe directionally that equities are the right place to be and that we'll see, um, obviously, the leadership change from basically value, um, uh, the value stocks, cyclical stocks to back to growth towards the end of this year. Well, Patrick, when it comes to macro fundamentals, you've made clear you are in the camp of believing that any inflation spike is likely to be transitory. Uh, in terms of the labor market, one of the big questions right now is a around this uh, trend that's emerging in the U.S. that it's difficult to find workers. It came through in the payrolls report last week. It came through again in some new data yesterday. Uh, could this struggle to find employees ultimately derail the recovery in the U.S.? Is that a risk that you're watching? That's a great question. Um, fun enough, we were talking about that yesterday. And if you look at the support that's being given by the government at the moment, um, they give something like $15. In fact, actually, it works out at $15 working a 40-hour week, which is about $600. Now, that's what the average person is actually being paid not to work at the moment in terms of COVID support. But that COVID support finishes in September. And at that point, you know, that those, you know, those people that aren't basically actually motivated to go back to work at the moment because, you know, they're earning just as much, you know, on government pay, that finishes in September. So that will change. And you're going to get those people back into uh, the workforce. But yes, certainly, um, obviously, you know, there, you know, there are uh, difficulties, you know, finding uh, short-term workers. But uh, we feel as the economy stabilizes and obviously that effect of less government pay that, uh, you know, that should, uh, you know, that should soften a little. But there are huge structural changes going on in terms of, you know, what you talk about, which is a really valuable point. You know, the, the reason AI is becoming more important is that basically people are looking to replace workers, you know, now with machines and productivity is going to continue to obviously keep uh, deflationary forces on wage costs. Though it's a very good point that you raise, but structurally, because of that, and obviously, you know, because of productivity and, uh, and digitization and globalization, we don't see inflation as, uh, as really being a problem. And these are transitory problem, problems that are caused, as I say, by the pandemic that, 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 that will right themselves towards the end of the year.